Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is longest palindromic subsequence and it is a medium level problem. So the problem statement is very straightforward. It's just a one line statement and it says that we have been given a string and we have to find the longest palindromic subsequence. Now coming on to the time and space complexity, it is both n square where n is the size of the string. So by denoting this uh, mod s, they are saying that this is the length of the string. Now both space and time will be n square. So we have to find the longest palindromic subsequence in n square. Before that, let us discuss with an example what is our longest palindromic subsequence. So whenever you hear subsequence, you have to make sure that you can take the characters in any form. This is the first character, second, third. 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th. There are 9 characters in total in this particular string and you can take any of them. It is not necessary for them to be contiguous. So it is not necessary to for me to pick 1, 2, 3 and 4 together as a contiguous uh, subarray. All I have to do is I have to pick some random elements from between and I can uh, leave some elements out such that if I have 1 then after it a greater number or a greater index should be there. This is what we generally mean by a subsequence. Now a palindromic subsequence is something which will be a subsequence of this particular given input string and it should be a palindrome as well. The definition is very plain and simple. So we can see that the answer in this case is B A B C B A B. So how we can form this? So this is B A B and then we have C B A B. So you can take this particular C and then you can take this B and this A B. Right. So you see you could not have taken this particular C for the central C because after this second C there does not exist B A B. Right. There is, there is only A B. So that is why it is uh, important for you to take this first C. Right. And again you could have also taken instead of starting from the second B you could have taken this particular B and then A B C B and then A B. Right. So this is how it works. Now. Uh, if you have watched or if you have solved yesterday's problem, then it would be of very help to you to solve this particular problem because the ideas are kind of similar. So if you have solved the yesterday's problem, then I highly recommend you to try this problem on your own. Now that I have given you a slight idea of how you can solve this problem, try something on your own and then you can come back to this video where we are going to discuss longest palindromic subsequence. Right. So the key idea is to use dp and let us discuss what are going to be the key dp states. So let us say I have my dp of ij. Right. So dp of ij is going to denote it is going to denote the length of the longest subsequence in the substring from i to j. So basically, if I have a string s and I choose any two indexes i and j, my dp of ij, dp of ij is going to store the length of my longest common subsequence in the substring starting from i and ending at j. Right. So if I know this, my answer, my final answer is always going to be stored in dp of 0 n minus 1. Why is it so? Because I want my string to start from 0 and end at n minus 1 index. Right. So this is the position at which my final answer will be stored. Now let us see how we can make the transitions for dp. So uh, you already know what is the definition of the string. Now if I have a string and I have some characters, let us say it is b, b, a, b, c, b, C, A and B again. Right. So this is my string. Now for each character in this string, I do not know whether it will be considered in my final palindromic substring or not. So my final palindromic is substring is coming out to be B, A, B, C, B, A, B. So here I can see the first character is B. But while doing DP and while writing the program, the program would never know that the first character is B. This idea is similar to yesterday's problem that we never knew that the, this is this would be the first character 
in the longest common subsequence right so we never know this in dp problems but what we try to do is we take one way where it is going to be the first character and we take the other way where it is not going to be the first character right so i hope that you guys are able to relate it with yesterday's problem because today what we are going to do is let's say this is the first character in my original string and this is the last character in my original string now this first character can either be a part of my longest palindromic subsequence or it cannot be a part of my longest palindromic subsequence similarly for this character as well so let's say if my first character i want to stick to it and i don't want to move anywhere so let me just write take first so i can try to take the first character by not moving my i pointer and moving my j pointer one step to the left so here i am assuming that this is going to be a part of the final subsequence and this b is not going to be a part of the final subsequence right this is one way of doing it now the other way of doing it is i move the i pointer and i do not move the j pointer so here what i am doing is i am trying to take this last character i am assuming that this is going to be included in my final subsequence and this character is not going to be included in my final subsequence right so you see this is the most interesting part about dp that we do not know what is going to happen we are just exploring all the different ways possible right so either this pointer has to move or this pointer has to move one of them has to move to make a state change and both of them cannot remain the same right it cannot be the case like where both of them are the same right so we have to move one of the pointers right so we have discussed what is we try to move one of the pointers can there be a case where both of the pointers are moved together yes there can be a case where both of them move together for example you will see you will see that if this and this character that means the character at pointer i and the character at pointer j are same so what is going to be my answer if these two characters are same can i write it like b and b right now i can ask my dp that what is the answer between these two characters right so if i somehow let's say this is not in the picture if i somehow find a palindromic subsequence in this range then if i know let's say i have a palindrome aba i can append these two b's at the end of them one at the beginning and one at the end and the length of my longest palindromic subsequence will increase by 2 so let me just explain this part again let's say you already have a palindromic subsequence so let it be c b c b c right so let's say you already have the this palindrome with you now you can take any character any character in the world let's say z and if you append it to the beginning and the end of the string the length of the longest palindromic subsequence is going to increase by 2 right so this is exactly what we are going to do here if i know that the characters at position i and position j are exactly the same what i can do is i can set dp of ij as 2 plus dp of i plus 1 and j minus 1 so you see what is happening i am just saying that if these two characters are similar right find me the answer for this particular range first and i will add 2 to it why because one character is going to be appended at the beginning and the other character is going to be appended at the end so again you see that you don't have to actually move the pointers this is the interesting part about dp that you just need to leave the work on it you just need to form these transition states and take a blind leap of faith and dp will do everything for you right so now that we have discussed these states there is one very small thing that you have to take care of for example if the value of i is 0 and the value of j is 1 right let's assume this case so if i do this particular thing this particular transition then what will happen is i will become 1 and j will become 0 right so this is an invalid state right because this value of i will become greater than this value of j whenever you want to take a substring these two values can be at max the same values but i value cannot be greater than the j value so in this case whenever you have such a situation when i is equals to is equals to j minus 1 you have to take care of it specifically 
in that case dp of ij dp of ij is only going to be 2 if again if a of i is equal to is equal to a of j then you are going to do something with this 2 and again when you are doing something with this 2 you need to make sure that if i is equal to is equal to j minus 1 you are only going to do this otherwise you are also going to add this particular part right this is the only thing that you need to consider and if a of i is not equal to a of j then you can try to do this and then try to do this and then take the maximum of these two values whatever is the best answer so you see you just trying to explore all the parts and taking the best among them so this was all about this problem of the day now let us have a look at the code so you see what i have done is i have created a variable n which is the size of the input string and i have created a double dimensional vector dp of n cross n and all of the values are initialized with 0. Now this is just some base case setting for this uh, dp array. Why? Because dp of i i that means a substring starting at the ith position and ending at the ith position that means a substring of only one character its size or its answer is always going to be 1. You already know why because if there is only one character the longest palindromic subsequence will be the character itself. Right. So I have just set some base case here. Now this is two for loops and again and like yesterday we are just going to ignore them for now we are going to focus on this particular part first. So you see what I have done is if a of i is equal to, is equal to a of j then I check if i is equal to j minus 1 that means that this edges into each other I set dp of ij as 2 otherwise I set dp of ij as 2 plus dp of i plus 1 j minus 1 right otherwise what I will do is I will try to explore both of these parts one of them is i plus 1 j other other one of them is i j minus 1 and I will take the maximum of them in dp of ij and at the end I can just return dp of 0 in minus 1. Now again if you want to do this with memorization this core logic will be exactly same every time and you just have to set the base case like I have set it here. You can also set the base case here if i is equal to, equal to j then return 1 right this is something that you would do in memorization. And again, this is something that you will have to do in memorization that dp if dp of ij is not equal to minus 1, then you have to return dp of ij. Now, yesterday someone was asked that why do I have to do this particular part that dp of ij is not equal to minus 1. So, the thing is when we do memorization, we initialize all the values with minus 1 or some other non possible value, right? Here I am doing it 0, but in memorization, you would initialize it with some value which cannot be a probable answer. Right. So, if I initialize it with minus 1, this will indicate that I have not computed the answer for this i and j right now, right? And I need to compute it. But if this value is not equal to minus 1, that means I have already computed the answer for i and j, and I don't need to compute it again, and I can just return from here only dp of ij, right? This is the idea why we write it like this. Now, at every position where I am setting dp of ij is equal to 2, I have to return dp of ij is equal to 2. Similarly, I have to return from here dp of ij is equal to 2 plus. Now, you don't have to write dp here, you will have to call your helper function, whatever it is. And similarly, here also you will have to return something. So, this is how you can solve this problem. Now, let me erase this part first and then we will talk about the for loops. So, you will see that at each position here, my ith state is depending on my i plus 1 is state. Right? J is depending on j minus 1, that's fine but i is depending on i plus 1. That means I have to compute i plus 1 state before I compute the ith state. That is why my for loop for i is going to be in reverse order. Right. So, i starting from n minus 1 till i is greater than minus 1 and i minus minus. Since I have already computed the answer when the index is the same that means dp of i i. So, I have to start my j pointer from i plus 1 and till it is less than j I do j plus plus. Right. So, this was all about the for loops. At the end, I can just return dp of 0 n minus 1. So, let me just submit and show you that this particular code works. So, you see it passes all the test cases and the solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand this video is actually helpful for you and will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. 
in case you're one of them then definitely consider subscribing it's always free of course and you can obviously subscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later so share the channel with your friends until the next video drops keep coding stay safe bye bye